The terminal velocity of an object falling in a fluid is the constant downward velocity it will eventually have. By a fluid, we mean a liquid or a gas. Substances where particles are free to flow and move around. We can move through these substances and experience a drag or air resistance forces from them. Explaining how these forces work and how we reach terminal velocity can be quite tricky. So let's go through an example of a coin through air in detail. First, the falling object initially accelerates downward due to its weight. Weight is a downward force due to the gravity of the Earth. If no other forces act, then the coin will accelerate downwards because of this force. The acceleration of an object will always be in the direction of the resultant force acting on it. However, the object also experiences air resistance, which opposes the weight. Air resistance is a force caused by collisions with air molecules, which tries to stop the coin moving. As the coin is falling down, air resistance is pointed up, in the opposite direction to the weight. Now, as the object's speed increases, the air resistance also increases. Weight is currently stronger than air resistance, so the resultant force is directed downwards. So the object is still accelerating downwards and increasing its speed. The amount of air resistance the coin experiences depends on this speed. This is because there will be more collisions with air molecules as the coin moves faster through them. But you don't need to know that detail at GCSE. What you do need to know is that because the coin is moving faster from acceleration, it will experience a larger air resistance. This air resistance will continue to increase so long as the coin's speed increases. Eventually, the air resistance is equal and opposite to the weight. By equal and opposite, we mean that when two forces are in opposite directions and have the same magnitude, we can say that the forces are balanced. So the object stops accelerating as the resultant force is now zero. The coin was accelerating in the direction of the resultant force and increasing its speed. But now that there is no resultant force, there's no acceleration and the speed doesn't change. And because the speed isn't changing, the air resistance isn't changing. So our two forces stay balanced. This constant speed that the coin has reached, which keeps the air resistance and the weight balanced, is called its terminal velocity. Make sure you understand and can recall this explanation, as it makes for a very popular long answer question in exams. The context for a question like this may be different, such as something other than a coin falling through the air. An exam question could also change what the object is falling through. Remember we said terminal velocities can be reached in any fluid. So we should take a look at this in more detail as well. Terminal velocities can also be reached in liquids. Let's suppose we instead drop the coin in a cylinder of water. The coin still experiences its downward weight force, but now, instead of air resistance, it experiences an upward drag force. Drag works largely the same way as air resistance. It's caused by collisions with liquid molecules instead of air molecules. Most importantly, drag forces also depend on how fast an object is moving. So we'll still see the coin speed up and the drag force increase. And then we'll reach a terminal velocity when the weight equals the drag. One other way exams can test you on this topic is by asking you to compare the motion of objects falling through different fluids. So let's understand this as well. Objects will have smaller terminal velocities and reach them in less time in thicker fluids. The technical term for the thickness of a fluid is viscosity, but you probably won't see that word much at GCSE. It's a measure of how difficult it is to move through a fluid and affects how strong drag forces are in them. Let's look at our cylinder of water again, but this time let's compare it to a cylinder of honey. Honey is much harder to move through, it's more viscous, and the drag forces are stronger. If we watch the motion of the two coins, we see that the coin in the water accelerates much more quickly than the coin in the honey. This is because there's less drag in the water, so the coin has a stronger downward resultant force here. 
Most importantly, the coin in the honey has travelled less distance and taken less time for the forces to become balanced. As the honey is thicker, the drag will match the weight at a slower speed than in the water. Here, the coin hasn't reached terminal velocity yet, as it needs more speed for the drag to balance the weight. So the main differences we observe is that the coin in the honey reaches terminal velocity before the coin in the water, and the terminal velocity is reached slower. You might also need to make this comparison for a liquid and a gas, like water and air. In general, the liquid will be thicker and have the coin reach terminal velocity first. These liquid liquid comparisons are much more common though. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos, and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here. Or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE physics course. See you there.